Good morning and welcome to my morning read. Today we are going to talk about this little phrase that uh, kind of jumped out at me while I was doing my study um, a few days ago in Ephesians chapter 10 and uh, verses uh, 4. And once it jumped out at me, I then went into the Word to see where this phrase um, was first mentioned and uh, what was the circumstance where, uh, that it was me- uh, mentioned. Then I thought, you know, that'd be really an interesting topic to talk about. And so I want to talk to you guys about it because it tells us a lot of things within it because the phrase, um, but not. Uh, and me, it houses tremendous amount of love, mercies, faithfulness, God's, uh, um, all of the character that is God, who he is towards you and I, are housed within that phrase, but God. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, when I was studying it, show, uh, it read this way, but God being rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. That is a powerful picture. Uh, imagine in one's mind and spirit and thoughts to uh, grasp and to meditate on. But God, being rich in mercy, the Bible tells us that his mercies are new every morning. And uh, because of that, it is not stale, if you will, fresh stuff. And it is direct to you and I. But God, being rich in mercy for his great love, it was his great love directed his mercy and created that but God. And uh, I wanted to uh, take a closer look about phrase and, and break down uh, this uh, these two words uh, so that you and I can get an understanding as the impact that it has towards us, the reader, as we read those words. Let's look at but. But is a uh, small, you know, it's a conjunction which we've learned in our language of English when you're learning how to uh, uh, learn about the different parts and putting sentences together and so forth. So we know this uh, word but is simply a conjunction and um, uh, it means several different things based on what one is trying to say. Uh, means uh, the concept unless as a, it's as it's also used as a preposition where it means um to expectation of accept uh, to save um as a adverb it is also used it means only or just um but this word uh, what it basically means is showing that redirection of something um it's god redirecting me because of his great love wherewith he loved us he directed his uh rich his mercies his rich mercy towards us and so this but god it signifies a redirection of some sort in a in a uh, situation that you and i are a part of or in the midst of and so i wanted to look closely at the scripture and um in when we first mentioned or when we first saw it, and it is in Genesis, um, in the book of Genesis, with Noah. Noah is in the midst of this flood, and um, he's in the ark. He's been tossed. He and his family has been tossed around uh, for a, a close to a hundred days and so forth. And uh, the Bible tells us there comes this little phrase, but God remembered. And uh, the Bible tells us and introduce us to this redirection um, that we see here in the book of Genesis in 8, chapter 1. But God remembered for and all the while. And so God remembered and as a result of him remembering him, he redirected a couple of things and the water began to recede. Uh, all of those things and to manifest God began to show his power in the redirection of the situation. The next thing that we saw is in Genesis chapter 31 verses 2 and see but God has seen my hardship and toil of my hand and last night he renewed. This is Genesis it's about um, uh, 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 with Abraham and Isaac it says in the God uh, if the God of Abraham, my father, God, of, if the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac have been uh, with me, you would surely have sent me away empty-handed. God has seen my hardship and toil of my hand, 
and last night in Genesis chapter 31, verses 2 to 42. And we see in uh, that uh, this, uh, we've studied, studied this story with uh, Isaac and um, how he was treated. In Genesis 31, we see it again. Um, Yet your fathers had cheated me, uh, your father had cheated me and changed my wages ten times, but God did not permit him to harm me. And Jacob is talking about Laban when Laban uh, tried to, um, you know, uh, uh, upper hand on him and uh, broke his word and so forth. But we see that God intervened and redirected. Uh, Laban in the sense that he wasn't allowed to harm uh, Jacob in any way. So we see this little phrase, man. It's really a beautiful thing when you look at it from that point of view. It is a redirection caused by God because he loved them, and um, which is stated in Ephesians chapter uh, 2, verses 4, which I read to you in the onset. God being rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. And um, because of that love, he, he directed his mercy towards you and I. And let's continue to read some of these other things. Uh, but God wanted to love you and wanted to keep the promise that he had made to your ancestors, Deuteronomy 7, 7. God still loves you, and he still wants to keep promises that he's made, he tells us that um, his word is forever. And uh, I've talked to you guys about the difference between facts and uh, truth. God's word is truth, period. It says, sanctify them by thy truth, thy word. So, and I've said to you many times, whatever situation you and I find ourselves in, that is the fact. There's nothing, um, it's not, it is the fact. We are in the midst of this. But the truth is, he says, I will not let the river, the waters overflow you. I will not, you know. So his uh, truth will overcome uh, the facts. It will change it. And so that's why I say to you, whatever fact you're dealing with right now in your life, introduce the truth into it. Introduce truth. Look at the word of God. Find the truth concerning anxiety. Find the truth concerning healing. Find the truth concerning jo- a job. Find the truth concerning uh, um, any situation, mental disease, tells us all of these things, lack of sleep, whatever uh, the human condition you find yourself in, there is a truth from God's point of view towards that situation. And you and I are living fact of it, but God's word, it's truth. And the entrance of the word into our spirit will give us that revelation. And once we get the revelation of the truth in the situation, becomes ours we we take ownership of that and we then make our confession which is by faith and we receive we change the facts that we are living in to the truth of god's word and that's the that's what we are doing on a daily basis finding the truth in our situation so that we can change the facts by which we live first kings 5 4 says now the lord my god has given me peace on every side so we see but now, and again, when you are in a stressful situation, it tells us but God. And so that phrase, I'm telling you, is a beautiful thing. It is one where uh, God comes in now, and he is going to establish his power and his will in that situation. Second Chronicles, um, let, let me read First uh, Kings one more time. Now the Lord my God has given me on every side. I have no enemies. All is well. So, uh, God that we are talking about, and when he puts in that little um, change, that little, um, uh, as we say, that conjunction that shows up and uh, he introduces that, but God, oh man, things is time to rejoice, guys, because God is now going to redirect uh, your situation. Psalms 49. 15, but God will redeem me from the realm of the dead. He will surely take me himself. And that is our Father, our God, but God. And so I don't care where you are in. Psalm 73, 26 says, My health may fail, my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. And 
I'm telling you guys, you and I should rejoice when we see that um, Psalms 86, 15. But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithful. And so and I are waiting for the but God, a little uh, conjunction that I mentioned to you, our situation and whatever it is, there is the truth. And you and I are simply living out the facts. But I'm telling you, uh, call on your God so that he can walk in. I have many of but but God inf- um, experience in my life, and I've shared several uh, with you. One that comes to my mind is uh, which I mentioned to you guys recently, being on a um, on a train, public transportation, coming home in New York, or after partying a night out um, in the clubs, about four or five in the morning, maybe even later than that. Anyway, I'm on the train, and I see these two men looking at me and having conversation. And my mom begins to pray because she, God woke her up. I am witnessing this thing. And these two men got up and started arguing with themselves and they left. And when I got home, my mother told me what God had revealed to her, that these two men were the conversation as to whether to do, come to kill me or not. And uh, that is a God being rich in mercy. And so... I have those who have those, and this is the Father that we serve. So I want to encourage every single one of you guys. I mean, there's a lot going on in the world today. We're looking at uh, uh, the price of things changing. We, uh, we've talked about the supply chain. We've talked about all of these judgment that is the beginning of labor pains that are happening in the kingdom of darkness. We're looking and seeing all of this manifestation. But you are not a part of the kingdom of darkness, part of the sons of disobedience anymore. You're a child of God and you're in the kingdom of God. And because you're in the kingdom of God, you can have the but God experience because the Bible says, my God shall supply all of your needs. And so whatever situation, whatever fact you're in, as I've said earlier before, I, there's a but God uh, for that situation. And I started, um, uh, was Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4, Romans 5, 8 says, but God showed his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And that is the driving force that causes the but God from God's purview is that love that he has for you and I. I studied recently about how many plans he has, so much so that it, it, it uh, says that the sands of his are not numbered. It. So he has hands. And that reveals to me and shows me that Every time you and I make some kind of decision that causes us to move aside, God's plan is so numerous that one in there for that decision that you and I made that sent us off in another direction. And so because of those many plans that he had, all things will work together for good for those who love God according to his purpose. None of your decisions that cause you to go in any direction will trouble God because he has a plan already laid out for you. And so why not then surrender to him? Jesus Christ, God had a plan for Jesus Christ. And because he had a plan for Jesus Christ, he has a plan for you and I. And Jesus Christ had to come to the place where he surrendered to the plan of God. The plan of God was to die on a cross. And Jesus starts to argue in the Garden of Gethsemane about this plan that God has. And so he comes to the Father, and he's just coming, laying it out. He says, I'm not sure about this, man. I'm not sure. And God begins to talk to him. And then Jesus makes the statement, not my will, but thy will be done. My plan, your plan, I'm going to surrender to your plan. And Jesus Christ surrendered to the plan of God, and look what happened. As a result, The Bible tells us all kinds of things happen. You and I are here as a result of Jesus Christ surrendering to the plan of the Father because the Bible tells us he has many plans laid out for us and he had one for Jesus as well. So um, it tells us in, in Romans, but God showed his love to us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but gift, the free gift of God 
And that is one of the wonderful things. Uh, yeah, that little conjunction right there, guys, beautiful. But God in First Corinthians one twenty seven, choose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chooses what is weak in the world to shame the strong. And so I am a part of that, and uh, God is using me to uh, shame the wise and the world because he's using me, a uh, weak vessel and boy. But if you hear my story, I've messed up so much. But because God so many plans based on the decisions that I've made, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and that are called to his purpose. But I wanted to do some time and talk to you guys about this wonderful little conjunction um, and that phrase and what it means to you and what it means to God when God comes in. Um, in Genesis 20, uh, verses 3, and Abimelech, uh, um, Abraham and Sarah lied and said that she's my sister and so forth. Um, in Genesis chapter 20, verses 3, it says, But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Indeed, you shall, you're a dead man. Uh, and so, uh, because the woman whom you have taken for you, she is a man's wife. And God will show up to people in their dream, but God, those that are troubling you, but God. And um, he is able, is he not, he says, uh, makes a statement, am I not the God of all flesh? And so if he is not, he is the God of all flesh, he will show up to anyone, anyhow, any on your behalf. And you see that little phrase, but God, that means that there's a redirection that is about to take place in your life and in the life of anyone that is not um, a part and wanted to cause you any harm. In Genesis uh, 31, 7, but God did not allow him to hurt me. Um, you see all these different things uh, about but God. So I want to encourage all of you guys and stay before the Lord, keep praying, and uh, get into God's space so that you can have a but God experience so that you can testify about it. The Bible tells us that just shall live by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight.